Jazzcast Pros. Are you interested in starting a business or a side hustle? Maybe you have something that you're really passionate about and want to potentially help others with it and make an income and make an impact. Well, then this is the episode for you. My name is Marshawn Hargrave, and I am the owner of High Vibe Cowork, which is a virtual community for women entrepreneurs. And I myself have been building this business since fall of 2020, so three and a half years, which in business is still in um, kind of its toddler phase. But I've also worked with many, many entrepreneurs, both on this podcast, in my mastermind groups, and just networking in that space for a while. And so today I'm going to share with you the 10 tips that I would give someone if they are starting their business from the beginning. These are things that if I were to start over today, these are things that I would do a little bit differently or put a higher priority on in the initial phases. Welcome to High Vibe Table Talks, the podcast to help you, the cautiously ambitious woman, remove mental barriers and take action now so that you can achieve your high vibe desires. Every week, I share insights from myself and my guests to help you navigate the messy middle. So let's get into number one. My first tip that I would say is work with an event of strength of mine. So this is something that I have struggled with. You know, now we're coming into tax time here in America and I'm nervous. Like I don't know what my accountant is going to say I owe when I do my taxes this year. And I think the fear of the unknown really puts heavy weight and pressure on what's happening. So I know, especially if you're starting a side hustle, a lot of times your full-time job is providing the ability for you to do your side hustle and for you to put money in. And that's important. And that is a valid place to start. You know, it, it doesn't make sense for you to just stop one and start the other. A lot of people do it on the side to see do I like it? Do I enjoy it? Is it profitable? Can I do this first? Which is a, a really great step. But instead of just being like, oh, I'm just going to kind of fund this ish, um, which is what I did for a long time, start working with an account. And I currently use this app called You Need a Budget. Um, I really like it because it kind of forecasts where your money's going to go. So as it comes in, it has a place to go. You're not going to know where all of it's going to go from the beginning, but getting curious and understanding it coming in and out is a really important piece. So if I were to start my business over again, tip number one is start your accounting. Tip number two is another thing that you have probably heard if you've listened to a handful of my episodes on this podcast, and it is work on your sales funnel on a daily basis. If you don't sell, you don't have a business. What I have seen is that a lot of people get into entrepreneurship because they're really passionate about something. They love doing something. They had a problem, they found a solution for that problem, and now they want to solve that problem for others who were in, who are currently in a position that they were in. A lot of entrepreneurs that I talk to, their ideal client is a previous version of themselves. And I love those types of entrepreneurs. I think that that is just such a service-based and heart-centered approach, and I love it. That being said, a lot of times people get into entrepreneurship and they've never, they don't have a background in sales. They don't have a lot of experience in sales and they feel like if they build it, people will come. And that's not unfortunately how business works. So understanding your sales process, again, it's same the same with your money. It's just like knowing how customers are coming in, when they're leaving, what does their buying process look like? Getting really curious about the process is going to make growing and scaling your business just easier. You know, don't be afraid of that no, because it's going to come. People are going to fall out of your sales funnel. And so you have to get a lot more in than come out. So Really spending time in sales in your business on a daily basis and showing up to it every day, that is how you have a full pipeline. That's how the no's just kind of like, all right, I'm on to the next one. Cool. And it's how you'll hone in on what works for you. Sales can feel pushy. It can feel inauthentic. But when you find a script and a groove that really works for you, it's going to feel a lot 
more effortless. It's never going to be easy. Looking at rejection is never going to be like an easy part of business, but showing up to it on a daily basis is going to really make an impact in how quickly your business can scale and grow. Tip number three, understanding your zone of genius and getting super curious on the things in your business that are your zone of genius and things in your business that are your zone of competency. Finding your zone of genius and spending as much time, even if you add 1% more of your day into your zone of genius on a weekly basis, in the next year, your business is going to look completely different. And, you know, really focusing on how you could outsource the rest. For this podcast, I outsource my post-production. You know, Jazzy from Jazzcast Pro, she does all my editing. She puts everything out there. So I'm able to focus on the things that I'm good at. And that is talking to a microphone (laughs) or interviewing guests. And then the rest is kind of done. You know, I've worked with many clients who are like, okay, I really enjoy for instance, sewing. So I'm going to sew pieces for people. And then they started doing custom sewing work and they hated it. They were like, this is too much pressure. This is not it. And so really niching down into the what of the what and your why is going to be really important. And so this client that I'm talking about, she ended up creating sewing classes because she wanted to be around others who enjoyed it. And she wanted to gift them the the knowledge of how to sew and how to take patterns and the equipment and do that to create something beautiful. And so it takes curiosity. It takes trial and error to find out, okay, I think I can start a podcast. I really like podcasting. I like listening to them. I like having conversations. I do not like editing. So I'm going to outsource that. I don't enjoy prospecting. So maybe I outsource that. I don't enjoy accounting or managing my money. So I'm going to outsource that. There are so many hats that you wear as an entrepreneur and finding your zone of genius, spending more time in that and less time in the other areas is another way you're going to just really be able to grow and scale your business. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, say no to things that don't feel good faster. Pivot faster. Fail forward. In 2023, I was using this platform called Mighty Networks, and I thought it was like going to be the next big step for my business. And because in theory, it had what I was looking for. I wanted to show up for entrepreneurs, whether they needed encouragement, education, inspiration, connection. And this platform was going to be a way that I could show up to my community on a daily basis using this platform. And I was really excited about it. And I got a couple months in and just really struggled to show up to it. Like for whatever reason, there was just some big friction and I had a really hard time letting it go. Um, And then I had a chat with someone about my business and where it was going. And they're like, what? There's friction of, they could hear it in how I was talking about Mighty Networks and how I was showing up to it. And they're like, that's out of alignment. Say no to it. And I let go of Mighty Networks that day. I had a cry about it. I cried on my kitchen floor. I'm like not joking. (laughs) Um, I just sat there and just cried because I felt for many, many months that this was going to be how my business was going to grow. And saying no to it was creating space for what was next, but it felt hard and it felt like I was failing by saying no to it. Saying no to things that don't feel good and that intuition is a really important part of being an entrepreneur. So I would say tip number four is say no to things that don't feel good faster. There is power in the pivot. I did an episode about that a couple of weeks ago with Allie and Cassie, and and we talked a lot about that. So that is tip number four. Tip number five for entrepreneurs that are just starting out is that more is not more. As I was increasing my pricing, I felt like I had to add more so that people felt like they were paying for the higher pricing. They were getting more out of it. And all it did was cause confusion and a less fluid customer experience. I felt like I was giving more and so people were going to pay more. 
And that's not the case. People aren't paying necessarily for all the things they get out of it. They're paying for the experience of working with you, the experience, your expertise, your background, your zone of genius. That's what people are paying for, not necessarily. And it depends on what exactly you're selling. But I have seen a lot of entrepreneurs feel like as they scale and grow, because they're charging more, they need to do more, they need to be more, or they will get more customers if they add more products or tiers or worksheets or presentations or courses. If I add more, I'll get more people. I think some of that is fear-based, like, oh, if I'm just in creation mode, then I'll get more. I don't have to do the scary things like sell. I don't have to put myself out there. I don't have to talk about my stuff. So don't fall into the trap that more is more. Like I started adding more times to the weeks and I had people like drop off because they're like, they felt compelled, like they had to do all of those things and they couldn't commit to it. And they were getting everything they needed out of the two calls a week. They weren't going to be able to attend five calls a week. So they just like dropped out because they felt like, oh, I'm not showing up to the things that I say I'm going to if I'm paying for all of this. And really, they needed the two calls a week. Their time is very valuable. And two calls a week was exactly what they needed. It bookended their week, and they are so happy with that. And so it was just a really interesting lesson around what I thought my customers wanted and what they actually wanted. Tip number six, when people show you who they are, believe them. And this is another one too that like it's been interesting how it has shown up for me in my business, for others, like my clients and their business, and also how it has shown up for people that I know in their business and also shows up for them in life. Like it's one of those things that entrepreneurship is very confronting and there are lessons that I learn during entrepreneurship that I then apply to other areas of my life as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, as a homemaker, you know, all the different hats that I wear and how I show up as an entrepreneur definitely changes how I show up in other areas. And so I have seen this and I have clients who have seen this and it's like, especially being service centered, heart-centered entrepreneurs. We want to believe in the good in people. We want to give them the benefit of the doubt. And sometimes people show us who they are and we have rose-colored glasses on. Again, it goes back to being connected to your gut. And if your gut is telling you, hey, this this just is out of alignment and I need to like cut off this relationship or not move forward in this partnership, whether it's with a vendor, whether it's with a client, you know, early on you could be like, I want, I need all the clients. And I do think that there is an important part about learning who your ideal client is not. And some of that is like taking on clients that you're just not in alignment with because you don't know that stuff until you know. But going into each experience, like, okay. Let me have my eyes open. Let me stay super curious about what I like, dislike, am struggling with, am working, you know, vibing really well with. With this person is really important. And when you start to feel something is off, it probably is. Don't sweep that intuition under the rug because you're afraid to have that uncomfortable conversation or confront someone and say, hey, this just, this doesn't feel right. Can can we like, either explore how to fix it or maybe we're just not a right fit. So tip number six is when people show you who they are, believe them. Tip number seven, (laughs) don't change your prices incrementally. And I'll give you an example. It's hard to change prices and I would never deny that it's not. Like pricing and I've been on calls with people who are like, you're undercharging. And it's like, well, I'm trying to sell it what it is. Like if I could just like bring in 10 clients who paid $5,000, like that'd be great. It's not that easy. But it's hard to raise prices. And so don't do it in small increments. And I'll give you an example. When I first started, so I did my beta test for my first cohort and it started October of 2020. And it was like, end your year 
um, with intentionality and community and, you know, didn't, this year has not gone the way that we thought it was going to go. So take control of what you can control in this moment and let's end the year together with intentionality. It was a beta test. I didn't charge for it. I just wanted to see if it if it would work. Worked really well. People really enjoyed it. They wanted more of it. So then I did a second one in quarter one of 2021. And I charged $10 per person for the quarter. The ne- Yes, $10 a quarter to meet twice weekly. Because I was, I was scared to charge people. In my mind, I was all I was doing was opening a Zoom room. I'm just opening a Zoom room. Like anybody can do this. So I charged $10. And then quarter two, I was like, okay, if I'm really going to do this, like I have to – is not <laughs> – it's not – a great business model for that amount of time. The the time and money exchange was just not even. So then I went to $25, which still is not a lot of money. Again, it's $25 to meet twice a week, every week for 10 weeks. And so then I went to $100, the next one. And <laughs> so if I think about it, I'm like, okay, so in three years, like my pricing has changed a lot. My point is that To go from $10 to $25 was hard. My suggestion is if you're going to raise prices, really raise them to where you want them to be. Don't say, okay, well, I won't lose people if I go from 10 to 25, so that should be okay. Because you're going through the same heartbreak, the same struggle, the same friction, no matter what you're increasing your prices to, So just charge what you want to get paid from early on. Obviously, do some beta testing, like give discounts. Like I'm not saying no to that, but the friction of changing your pricing incrementally is like the same no matter what you up your pricing to. So rip the Band-Aid off and charge what you're worth early on. And I say all of these things, a lot of them are just part of the... It's kind of the cost of being an entrepreneur is learning these lessons. Part of why I think that this is important is because you're going to hear this from me. You may hear it from someone else. And then when it happens to you in business, you're going to be like, they were right. I should have listened to them instead of being like, that was just a one-off. Hey, that's not going to be me. In hearing these, maybe you'll learn the lessons faster because I do think that some of this is the scars of the battlefield of entrepreneurship. It's kind of like, yeah, you're part of the club. You did that too? Yep. I I remember being there. (laughs) Undercharging is like a part of a lot of people's stories. So if you are currently undercharging or scared to charge what you want to, yes, it's part of the process. (laughs) So that was tip number seven is don't change your pricing incrementally. If you're going to change your prices, charge what you think you're worth and then probably double it. (laughs) All right, tip number eight, practice your abundance mindset. We do live in a society that um, has a lot of fear-based practices around it. And I tended to be in scarcity mindset, you know, especially around things like money and clients and sales. And it's like, okay, well, where, where's the money going to come from? And like, and, and I've worked on it a lot. I've read a lot of books around it. I've practiced a lot and I still tend to slip backwards. You know, I talked about this in my, I think my vision board episode, but I talked about like manifesting this house and I had a very good practice around future self, current self, previous self, and working on being in abundance and things are out there for me and I have to go attract them. Then when I went full time, it was probably like eight months into going full time into my business, I was doing errands. And in one of the Lowe's parking lots, it said, it had like a sign that like need a new roof, we do financing for $99 a month or something like that. And I instantly went into panic of like, if something happened to our roof right now, I don't have the money to fix it. Like, I don't know where that money's coming from. There's nothing wrong with our roof. There's, we have zero signs that anything's wrong with our roof. But my 
baseline was in such scarcity mode that seeing that sign was like, oh my God, what if something happened to our roof? And that clicked with me of like, okay, I need to get back on my practice. I need to get back into things that keep me in an abundance vibration. Listening to, you know, podcasts that get me on that vibration, being around people who are in an abundance mindset, reading books about abundance mindset, whether it's Jen Sincero or Amanda Francis or Rachel Rogers or Eckhart Tolle or, you know, there's thousands of them out there, but making them a part of my day to day is important. And so if you are a new business owner, it's easy to fall into scarcity mode, especially just with like our society in general. So part of that too is finding community, whether that is like a community of podcasts that you listen to, a community of people who are also doing it. Finding community is so important and will really help your abundance versus scarcity mindset if you find people who are like, in that vibration. So being super intentional about that. Tip number nine is gather testimonials early. Um, Don't be afraid to ask for a testimonial. They are so helpful when you're in all of your marketing and having others hear about people's experience working with you. It just, it feels better. You start to understand what it is that your clients are looking for, what was their like outcome in working with you. Because then you can speak to during the sales process of, I've had other clients who started in a very scarcity mindset space and after working with me, their abundance mindset not only took over how they are in their business, but also their lifestyle. And it's changed, it's impacted the relationship they have with their family, with their friends, with their network because of this abundance mindset. Being able to take the words and really understand from the customer experience, even if you never use them, you're able to write better copy on your website and market and sell to future customers because you know what previous customers have loved about working with you and um, what future clients may be craving, whatever type of offering they're looking for. Gather testimonials. Tip number 10, we made it. Tip number 10 is the fortune is in the follow up. Follow up with people. Follow up with, uh, guess who Guess who needs to hear this? If you're listening, then you can't see, but I'm raising my hand. Um, these are all lessons that I learn over and over and over again, but the fortune really is in the follow up. As I said in tip number two, you don't have a business if you don't sell. And you have to continue to follow up with potential clients. Like we all are so busy. We all have so much on our plate and you need to be top of mind when someone is ready to buy. And so you have to follow up with them. You have to stay top of mind. Get creative and organic and have fun with the follow-up. I'm not saying like every day you need to be like, hey, just following up on this. Let me know what you think. Like, No one wants to get that email. No one wants to send that email. No one wants to reply to that email. So you can have fun with it. Get creative. You know, one of my dad's favorite emails to send when people go radio silent on him is Bueller. He'll be like, Bueller, Bueller. Um, And it's funny and people laugh. And then he's actually had people come back to him and be like, I couldn't remember your name, but I remember that email. So I typed in Bueller into my Outlook, whatever they use, and your name came up. So the fortune is in the follow up, but it doesn't have to be boring and like drone on. So that's tip number 10. We got through all 10. I have a bonus affirmation for all of you who are thinking about starting a business, have just started a business, or maybe you've been in business for a while and you just need to hear this again. And it is you are not your business. Don't forget that when your business falters or you have to pivot, it doesn't mean you're, you are a failure, you are bad, you are wrong. There is a distinction between you and your business and it's a deep seated relationship. It can feel like it's your baby and like part of you, but you are two separate entities. And if your business fails, then you got some lessons again, fail forward, but reminder that you are not 
your business. So those are my 10 plus tips if you are in the process of starting a business, thinking about starting a business. If you like this podcast, High Vibe Table Talks, don't forget to subscribe. We will see you next week. And remember that big dreams and small steps will transform your life.